The force is during a steady climb. The lift vector is tilted rearwards. Thrust acts along the flight path in a forward direction and drag acts rearwards. The force opposing lift is weight cosine theta and the force opposing thrust is weight sine theta plus the drag. Theta is the climb angle. Here's how we can derive the formulas for the components of weight opposing lift and the component of weight acting rearwards along the flight path. Consider a right angle triangle where three degrees is the glide path. Lift is acting at a right angle to the flight path. Thrust is acting forwards along the flight path and drag is acting rearwards with a component of weight also acting rearwards down the flight path and also vertically down. If I place a yellow triangle on the existing green triangle, effectively a rectangle is formed. And if I remove all the other arrows and symbology, that just shows the two triangles. In the green triangle, the interior angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if there's a three degree glide path and it's a right angle triangle of 90 degrees, the remaining angle must be 87 degrees. Looking at the yellow triangle, the 87 degrees must have three degrees added to it to make a corner of the rectangle of 90 degrees. This means the climb angle is equal to the angle sitting at the top of the yellow triangle. Now if I re-add the symbology in the arrows, we can see the line acting vertically downwards is weight alongside the yellow triangle. And the two missing sides are the force opposing lift and the rearwards component of weight. These can be found out using trigonometry the sine of the angle equals opposite over hypotenuse, the cosine of the angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse, and the tan of the angle equals opposite over adjacent. Labeling up the yellow triangle, the side opposite three degrees is called opposite. The longest side is called hypotenuse, which corresponds to the weight. And the remaining side is adjacent. Since sine equals opposite over hypotenuse and hypotenuse is weight, we can write sine of the angle equals opposite divided by weight. Rearranging this equation, we'll find opposite equals weight sine angle. And opposite is the force acting rearwards along the flight path. Similarly, the adjacent side can be found by using cosine of the angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse, where the hypotenuse is weight. So cosine angle equals adjacent divided by weight, which rearranged becomes adjacent equals weight cosine angle. Adjacent is the force opposing lift, which is weight cosine angle. Putting the triangle all back together again to look at the original problem, we can see the force opposing lift is weight cosine angle and the force acting rearwards along the flight path is weight sine angle. This can be summarised in a table. The force opposing lift is weight cosine gamma for the climb and it's also the same for the descent. The force acting along the flight path is weight sine gamma and it's also the same for the descent. In summary, lift equals weight cosine gamma and thrust equals drag plus weight sine gamma. Climbing flight. During a climb, an aircraft gains potential energy due to an increase in its elevation. This can be done by using kinetic energy, i.e. a loss of velocity in a zoom climb, or a steady climb, i.e. using power in excess of that required to maintain level flight. In a steady climb, the engine must provide enough thrust to overcome the drag and also lift the weight at a vertical speed.
pitch angle equals flight path plus angle of attack. And this is represented using symbols of theta equals gamma plus alpha. In a straight steady climb, lift is less than weight. Load factor is less than one. Another climbing triangle shows the hypotenuse, which is the flight path, V, effectively true airspeed. The opposite angle, which is the vertical side, as rate of climb. This can be rearranged. Sine theta equals rate of climb over V, true airspeed and sine theta equals thrust minus drag over weight. The angle of climb theta is the same in each case. Therefore, rate of climb over V equals thrust minus drag over weight. Rearranging the formula, rate of climb equals V multiplied by thrust minus drag over weight. The rate of climb is therefore equal to power available minus power required over weight. And another way of saying this is excess power over weight. Using the formula thrust minus drag over weight, or more specifically, sine climb angle equals thrust minus drag over weight, here's a question. A 50-ton twin-engine aeroplane performs a straight, steady wings level climb. If the lift to drag ratio is 12 and the thrust is 60,000 newtons per engine, the climb gradient is, now assume g equals 10 meters per second squared. So there's a few formulae to use. Climb gradient as percentage equals thrust minus drag divided by weight multiplied by 100 and force equals mass times acceleration. So to calculate a weight, which is the force, we use the mass and multiply that by 10. So in the question, weight was 50,000, 50 tons. Multiply that 50,000 by 10, so the weight is 500,000 newtons. Now, Technically this is wrong, but assume lift equals weight. So drag will be one twelfth of the weight. There was a lift to drag ratio of 12 to one after all. So assuming lift equals weight, 500,000 divided by 12 equals 41,667 newtons. Now, it's a twin engine aircraft and all engines were operating and there was 60,000 newtons of thrust per engine. So 60,000 newtons times two is 120,000 newtons. You can now go back to the formula, climb gradient as percentage equals. Thrust minus drag, thrust is 120,000 newtons the drag we've calculated as 41,667 newtons. Subtract that from 120,000 and divide that by the weight, which was 500,000 newtons. When you've finished all that, multiply by 100 to get a climb gradient of 15.7%. Lift is not equal to weight in the climb. In a straight steady climb, the load factor will be less than one, since the lift vector is displaced from the vertical and no longer directly carries the weight. A proportion of thrust will now carry the weight. When an aeroplane performs a straight steady climb with a 20% climb gradient, what will the load factor be equal to? To find the load factor, you need to know the lift and the weight. Assume weight equals one. If you assume that the climb gradient is the same as the sine of the climb angle, and gradient is height divided by distance, 20% climb gradient is 20 divided by 100 percent, which equals 0 0.2. Take the inverse sine of 0 0.2 and you will find the angle. 
which is 11.5 degrees. So the force opposing lift is weight cosine 11.5, which comes to 0 0.98. In other words, less than one. For a maximum angle of climb, the difference between thrust and drag must be as large as possible. The speed for maximum angle of climb is known as Vx and occurs at maximum excess thrust. For maximum rate of climb, the difference between power available and power required must be as large as possible. The speed for maximum rate of climb is known as Vy and occurs at maximum excess of power.